clap it. Not you, you idiot. We're here with Joe Lopez, the first openly gay MMA championship level coach. Uh, thanks for having me here, Craig. I'm sure my wife will really love to know that I've just come out of the closet and come gay. I mean, she's known you've been out of the closet for about 35 years now. Let's be honest here. You think so? I think so. You're here with me in Bali instead of doing your grading, black belt grading at home. Can you run me through your excuse list for why you're here? Well, I really love Mitch. Mitch lives and breathes jiu-jitsu. And I thought it'd be more, and he's a big fan of yours, and you know that. And I thought it'd be only fitting that instead of getting his black belt from me, he'd receive it from you. It'd mean a lot more. So I made it an executive decision. I didn't do this lightly. I jumped on a plane and I came out here so you could present Mitch with his black belt. And I'm sure that the rest of the boys can forgive me for missing my, their grading, <laughs> but they that, can thank you for that. That was a guilty laugh. Speaking uh, of gay things, let's talk about how we first met. Do you remember the first time we met? Yeah, it was in a toilet block. <laughs> <laughs> That's real, but seriously. Uh, <laughs> so you called me in, I was living in Puerto Rico. I said, absolutely, I'll come to Las Vegas for five weeks and live with you guys while we film the show. Let's talk about the state of you gentlemen. The first, like I had no idea what kind of absolute animal Joe Lopez was. I thought Joe Lopez was a sweet old grandfather. I arrive to the Airbnb. So let's, I land in Las Vegas. It might even have been a Wednesday night at that point. That no, was a Sunday night. Was I can't it? remember it well. Wait, for the record, I had no idea. You, we hadn't met him. I'd never we'd, gotten to know these we, 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 Like we'd spoken over Insta or whatever, but... Joe would only sexually harass me on social media, but we'd never, <laughs> I'd never gotten oh, to... That was only after you started me. sending me nude photos of yourself, you know, which I had to tell you to stop, you, you paid know? for those photos, Joe. I didn't pay. And you don't pay for fucking anything, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that means something. <laughs> it meant something to you. You told me at least send me $5, so I gave <laughs> you $5. <laughs> All right, so I arrived to the Airbnb. I let myself in. I think, where are these gentlemen? And about an hour later, the boys show up, and we are fully, 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 totally smashed. Joe's well, immediately asking me to check. It was Joey Vegas. Joey Vegas came out. He's a special Joey. And he comes out in Vegas. And I, I was on fire. I'm stone cold sober. He's flowing fucking 24 hours in that morning. So I'm thinking he's probably tired. He's a uh, middle-aged gentleman. He's probably pretty tired at this point, you know? He introduces himself and then starts asking me to choke him unconscious on the spot, saying, I don't have a neck. Put me to sleep right now. <laughs> and I believe I did. And he had a minor stroke at that point. <laughs> should we I should check you out right now, right? No, maybe not. Maybe not. Nah, 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 nah. It's a family friendly show. I mean, I did that for Alex Jones. I only do that for real celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Here's one thing we've got to clarify, right? So in the corner of Alexander Volkanovsky typically is me, you, Eugene and Frank Hickman. Ultimate fighter started. We put Frank Hickman in the corner. What were our results, Joe Lopez? Man, that was the worst experience. We went 4-0. Oh. Four <laughs> fights down, not a win. We went 0-4, and four, I believe. Yeah, 0-4. and four. It was embarrassing. Joe Lopez came to me and he said, Craig, we need a miracle. We need <laughs> you in the corner. Frank Hickman is not up to scratch. Frankie's going to hate this, but it's true. And I said, I'll Frankie's my brother and I'll take, hate it, Frankie, but sorry, Craig did pull it through. For I'll us. take the reins at this point. <laughs> and I pulled us through seven victories, one loss of the next eight fights. And we were able to win both <laughs> divisions. Yes. I'll claim that. I'll claim that as if I was in the fight myself, you know, just, well, like, that, just it, like we both do with Alexander Volkanovsky, you know? <laughs> <laughs> People said to me, how did he, teach me how he escaped that guillotine. I don't know, but I'll pretend to know because it sells some DVDs, you know what I mean? Mate, you made a fortune out of that. Not as much as you, brother. No, nah, no, I didn't make anything. You know, you bought four houses after that fucking DVD. Well, I had to house. I actually, guys, I, if you got a chance. I had to get house a, all three of your wives, you selfish <laughs> bastard, eh? That's four, not three. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers, bro.
But we should stay on track. Speaking of MMA and MMA gear, what is your favorite brand of MMA gear? Obviously, it's not engaged. <laughs> engaged. It's, look, don't get me started. There are standards and levels to this sort of stuff, and Engage is obviously at the bottom. Yeah, at the top, we've got Morgan, and then in the middle, what, what, what's in the middle? What's, the, what's that brand? Sanibel. Sanibel, that's the one. That was the glove that you punched me with, and when you hit me, you hit me that hard that the glove broke. The glove you didn't broke? Hurt, yeah, the glove broke. So and did and we thought it was because of your punching power, but then we found out it was just poor uh, manufacturing by... The glove broke and so did one of your six hammerheads as well, man. <laughs> Sanibel offered me a deal and I said, you know what, bull is in the name and I am a bull. You are a bull. So I'll take that deal. Sanibel will give 18% off if you use the code word silver. That's how we sneak in a plug at any moment, Joe. And that's how I'm using your fame to sell commercials that only I'm paid for, that you get nothing from. Fuck, I feel like I've been cheated here. I feel like I've been ripped off. You have. Can I get at least 5%? Sanibel, give me 2%. 2%, please. Sanibel, 2%. Oh, sorry, 2%. 2%. Oh, Sanibel, okay. Sanibel donate a lot to charity, a lot to the special community, and their budget's full, mate. You are not getting any money. But I am special, so I should get something. <laughs> Joe Lopez, we, you're here in Bali. You leave tomorrow, but we'll be reunited for the Ilya Taporia fight which was originally in Canada. You're not allowed in Canada because of your criminal history, so it got moved to Yeah, that's, Phoenix, that's so. correct, yeah. No, um, it's in California now. It's in California, yeah. It's been moved again. Um, yeah, it's, it'll be good. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, a lot of people, you know, counting Volk out again, you know, saying this, that, and the other, but, man, if you know Volk, Volk's a warrior. You can't stop that man. He's just... We'll see what happens on the night. I don't like to talk too much. A lot of people ask me about Volk. I say he's everything I'm not. You know what I mean? That is true. He, he, he is a gentleman, a good person, a great human being. All the things that you're not. And that's why me and you have a lot in common. We get along so well. <laughs> Maybe. And for the record, Maybe. tell the camera right now, you have two students, me and Alexander Volkanovsky, but you told me in confidence that I'm your favourite, even though Volk's made you a lot more money. True. True. Toy, talk to me about being a coach and the enforcement you have in the gym because you rule like fucking Margaret Thatcher in her reign, you know? And I think of Margaret Thatcher because you look a lot like Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Without the curls, obviously. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have got a unique training style. Like some people are not allowed to talk at my gym because they just talk too much shit. So yeah, this... I don't allow them to talk. Other people, are, yeah, I... So you're, like, I'm not, we're not going to say any names. Obviously, you know who it is. Um, one of your students, not allowed to speak in your presence. That's right. Because he speaks too much shit, and I can't handle shit, so I don't let him speak to him. I love it. What's his, what's his punishment? Also, you rule over everyone, obviously, except me. Treat He's me. cleaning the toilets while I'm away. I put him on toilet duty again because he spoke to me before I left. He said goodbye, and I said, fuck that. You're on the toilet duties now. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I told him, he's got, we've got rules. Everything is there for a reason. Yeah. And if he's going to break the rules, he's going to pay the price. You're like a homosexual Mr. Miyagi, and I love <laughs> it. I wouldn't go that far, but that's a great compliment. Um, I'll wear it as a badge of honour. But you rule over everyone in that gym, because you were telling me about the time that Volkanovsky said something and you made him do... Explain the meat grinder, and then explain what you made him do. Well, the meat grinder is, is usually uh, a simulated fight. So every 30 seconds we bring in a new guy. And, and it, for, I've got all different types of meat grinders, but for MMA... It sounds like a Saturday night for you, eh? Yeah, when you're around. Um, when you're not around, it's not that way. But anyway, <clears throat> let's get back to the meat grinder. So 30 seconds, new guy. So we, we do pads, striking, wrestling, uh, jiu-jitsu, and, and, and we mix it up. I'd set, up the, I'd set it all up with the training partners. I turned my back and Alex changed it all around. What did he say? What, what did he do? Oh, well, he just said, oh, I prefer to have this guy doing this and this guy doing that. I went, okay. So the first five minutes, because it's usually a five so minute again, round. Five minutes, new guy every 30 seconds doing a different form of the martial art. Yes. And then a one minute break. 
And then Volkanovski, because he's the champion, he does this for 25 minutes because that's a title fight. Joe Lopez says... No, because he back-chatted me. I made him do 25 minutes straight. I cooked him. Yeah, back chat the coach. That's the sort of authority we need at B-Team. That's why we're bringing you in. Yeah, but, oh, mate, those poor B-Team guys, they're weak. They'll, they'll leave. They, they, they haven't got the, tenac the tenacity of Volkanovski and those the mindset. Cojones. Do you reckon? Yeah, the cojones. Do you reckon you Mexican cunts can get their cojones out and fucking put them on the fucking table? You know which fucking Mexican guys I'm talking about. So this brings me to another fascinating thing about you, right? Your real name is actually Jose. Yes. Jose Lopez. Jose Antonio Lopez Tavo Martinez Diaz. That's my full Spanish name. <laughs> What's brilliant about this is me and Joe have this argument because Joe... Oh, no, we're not going there. Joe, the only people that say that are Mexican or South American people. Joe, wait, wait, let me explain <laughs> it. Joe speaks a special type of Spanish and it's called Spanish with a lisp. <laughs> and I'm not talking a lisp like Mike Tyson where it sounds a bit tough. I'm talking, how do we say gracias? Gracias. You know what I love? He can't even speak English and he's trying to tell me how to speak Spanish. That's what blows me out. The best is he learnt Spanish from a Mexican but threw the lisp in himself. <laughs> I've never heard of that happening before, except for obviously... <laughs> yeah, first time ever, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give us some Spanish. Tell, say something, obviously, about you being American and everything. Uh, um, Craig Jones is maricón del culo. Le gusta el culo mucho. ¿Entiendes eso? Si sabes Craig Jones, eso lo que es. Maricón del culo. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias to my Jose Lopez audience. He put me through a meat grinder with his best students. It was a fucking vegetarian meat grinder, mate. That was the weakest well, exactly. thing I've ever You pull right? fucking guard and you hang on to them for fucking five you minutes. You jumped in at the end like it was a threat. I was like, oh, gee, fuck, I'm in trouble now, man. <laughs> I nearly submitted you. You had a stroke. I did. <laughs> Your seventh one. I fucking, I blew my arm out trying to fucking choke you out. <laughs> <laughs> I have injured you many times. You have, you have. You've embarrassed me more times than injured me. The best uh, was, I told Joe, this is beautiful. When we were, in, we were in Vegas for five weeks, I told him In-N-Out Burger was healthy. He gained 20 pounds that he's never lost uh, since that time. Uh, it's a true story. I came in there at 80 kilos... Five weeks later, I blow out at 90 something kilos. I go, fuck, what happened? It was a crap. He's gone every day. Let's go get an In N Out burger. Not one, two. But he's got, what is it? The special, it's the a special, special menu. Fucking hard arm to twist, wasn't it, mate? It was. But I cut it down. By the, by the third week, I wasn't having two burgers, I was having one, I was skipping the fries. Otherwise, I would have been fucking 100 kilos, I'm telling you. It's kind of healthy. They're really good for you. In and out special because none of the ingredients are frozen, mate. That's the beauty of it, you know. And for that reason alone, I consider it a healthy dish. Well, it is. Out of all the other burgers, they are probably one of the best. The best. A yeah. Unless Shake Shack want to fucking give me some money, and then I'll fucking go over to Shake Shack. You're talking to a man that would sell his soul for three dollars fifty. And I love it. I appreciate it. I learned that from $3.50. What Craig, did I get a pay rise? People, people say, Craig, <laughs> it's you're, usually $2. You're the, ultimate, <laughs> you're the ultimate sellout. And I say, that's Joe Lopez management right there, mate. It is. It is. You, you give both, me a dollar, I'll fucking change. You are both coach and management. And look, I've got to take what I can. Okay? I've seen you in a strip club at 3 a.m., mate. I know you'll take what you can get. You know? oh. <laughs> <laughs> He told me, he told me he was a girl. <laughs> I told you I was a girl too, mate. True, true. <laughs> Let's go. Let's move on. <laughs> you see what you want to see, Joe? We didn't come here to discuss my, my oh, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah the 60-year-old man came to Southeast Asia for the culture, for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Lopez, for blessing us with your presence. Oh. That was good. That was good. That was a knockout. That was a knockout. I like it. Cheers. Uh, we got another one. A quick breather. Mm. We need to change the line. You want to have a line? No, no. Now, I want to ask you a question. No, I'm not gay and I won't do it again. <coughs> Why not? <laughs> no. Let's go to the B team. So... What I've been noticing on your B team is you're 
getting a lot of Australians coming out there. Oh, Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You tell me as a Spanish man living in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think of Australians? I love Australians. I love the culture. I'm, I'm, I consider myself Australian, not you Spanish. You told me, you actually said, Craig, what I love most about Australia is the fucking tax rate. That's what you told me. I fucking hate the tax rate. <laughs> but we're not getting into the tax rate. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'd move to Austin if I was worried about tax. No, you'd move to Bali with Mitch. Actually, I'd probably move to Bali with Mitch. I fucking love Mitch. I cannot wait until you message me tomorrow on your flight back saying, Craig, do not release this podcast. And I'll be like, bitch, it's already up. The star, honestly, this guy's got a whole, probably not one, two terabytes of bad stuff of me. And honestly, if it gets released, I'll probably get locked up. Um, Don't say that in Southeast Asia, Joe. Okay. I won't get locked up. I'll probably get... Um, culture what is it um a divorce yeah i agree my wife could be so lucky <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what the beauty of it is is anyone that comes on this podcast i'm taking them down with me you know what i mean <coughs> oscar and frank in the toilet freestyle mma in the toilet but you already were in the toilet Joe. i was i was i was always i was always going to get cancelled it was only a matter of time joe and talk to me about your time in an indian prison uh, it was only eight years, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm joking. I've never, I, I, I've never been in an Indian prison. But you've been in an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I just. <laughs> Good thing we won't be making any money off YouTube of this video. <laughs> thankfully. No, like, anyway, we've been going for t we've been going for about thirty minutes, and I think it's probably about twenty five minutes too long, Joe. I think so too. I don't know. You How can you and Mitch talk for two hours, and you and I can only talk for thirty minutes? Well, what else do you want to talk about, Joe? Tell me some stories. Tell me some Chuck Norris level stories about the bouncing days, Joe. Man. This is the best because Joe does interviews and he puts on an entire persona of fakeness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, about time you did some work in Indonesia, Mitch. Uh... Now, but I'll tell you the backstory about freestyle fighting gym, okay? And why I started it, okay? When, like Craig said, oh, I've been running nightclubs and pubs for the last, for a long time anyway, and it is boring, but you know, if, if you like going to nightclubs and pubs and you want to be safe, you probably go to the one of the nightclubs that I look after because we only employ really good guards and we look after our patrons, unlike some of the other places. But coming back to it, when I turned 40, I said, man, I'm over this nightclub shit. I've got to do something different. So what did I do? I went and bought a church. Fascinating. I bought a church five minutes from my house and I turned it into a gym, okay? Hey, you would uh, set on fire if you walked into a church. What are you talking about? Well, that's why I had to sort of get the church, you know? But my gym is a, an old church, which I converted into a gym, and I wanted a semi-retire. You kept the altar boys around though, didn't you? <laughs> no worries, altar boy Craig. <laughs> Go on, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. Anyway. I'm trying to tell a story. He asked me to tell a story. I'm trying to tell the story, but he gets so jealous because, honestly, he has nothing but a boring life. The only th thing exciting about his life is him ringing me every day, asking me, what should I post on Instagram? What should I do? How can I do this better? I call you and I go, are you still alive? And you go, yes. <laughs> and then I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Honestly, all his comedy, everything he's got, he got it off me. Because he's got nothing. Honestly, him and Alex Volkanovsky are very, very similar in the sense that they had no personality till they met me. I taught them to have a personality. And now he's got a personality. He wants to turn it against me. It's fucking wrong. All right, we've gone through your security business. We've gone through your Indian prison stint. We've gone through your altar boys. We've gone through freestyle MMA. What else can we get to, Joe? Why is it about me? Why can't we talk about you? It's... 
Because I run the fucking show, mate. It's my podcast. Yeah, but I'm older than you, so I should fucking take rank. I bring you on here to embarrass you. I know, and you've done it well. We got you very drunk before this podcast. You've said a lot of things you're going to regret. Oh, I don't regret make... anything because I've told everybody everything We've anyway. We've got you to make... Uh... I, wear, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I don't care. I've got nothing. The only thing I'm embarrassed about is a few of the videos that you got on your phone. Wait, you talking about... Actually, speaking of which, you obviously have the Spanish list, but you also have some fucking Spanish hips, mate. Hey? You have some beautiful Spanish hips. Hips? And you dance. You can take, I don't dance, you know that. You can take the man out of Spain. <laughs> you can't take the Spain Yeah, well, the Spaniards are known for their music, their dancing, their charisma, their lovemaking. You know, we, we are the most passionate minute, people in the world. Lovemaking. Talk about your lovemaking, Joe. Well, I don't have to talk about it. The girls do. You know that. Girls. Girl, girls, Good. yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, I'm a very popular man, you know. Um, I'm very good looking. Uh, Maybe in 1965. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> but I'm still... <laughs> well, you're telling me you still got it, Joe. I haven't. I'm not telling it. The girls tell me. Really? Look. Jeez. All right, we're going to wrap this up because I'm fucking... Joe's ruined his life enough. We've cost him his gym, his business. We've cost him his security license. We've cost him his wife. I don't know what else we can take from you. And we've done this in 30 minutes. Shout out to Freestyle MMA. Jose Lopez. Not Joe Lopez. Jose Lopez. <laughs> You're as Australian as I am American. Cheers to that, man. Cheers, cheers for fucking up my life, bro. Thanks, guys.